Deepak Shinoy joining us now, founder and CEO at Capital Mind. Deepak, great to have you on the show as always. Uh, it was just going through some of your um, posts today on X on Vodafone and you know the interesting thing that you also say is can this really continue as a going concern? I think that's a big question on the mind of anyone who owns the stock, anyone who watches the space and market watchers as well simply because the next relief seems to be only if they choose to convert uh, government debt to equity. Uh, yeah, but you know, Tamanna, they can't even do that because beyond a certain point, this becomes a PSU. And the problem with the PSU isn't uh, just that, it's the way they operate, right? Your hiring will change, the way you operate your company will have to change because once you become a PSU, then you end up with a lot of uh, restrictions on uh, uh, what you can do and what you can't do, your the remuneration you pay to your employees, the diversity of your employees, all sorts of things will will impact the way the business is run. So I don't think the government will want to become a 50% holder of this company, uh, regardless of uh, what it is. And, you know, they're, they've, they've had negative, negative equity for a while. So if you look at their balance sheet, their equity is a negative 100,000 crores, which means their accumulated losses... Uh, have made them uh, wipe out their equity and they're down another 100,000 crores. And this is after raising like 20,000 crores or something that they raised uh, recently. So I don't think at this point, uh, you know, this is very comforting because now they're going to actually have to pay this cash flow that has been accounted in the books, but they thought they'll get a relief in. And for the third time running, the Supreme Court has said, no, we won't uh, rethink the calculations. Deepak, what is fascinating about the way the stock has been behaving is how so much was being bet on the Supreme Court giving relief when there were no signs of the same. In fact, enough evidence to the contrary that the Supreme Court was not interested in entertaining any kind of relook at the entire case. Uh, it was attempted with relooking the AGR dues that was thrown out. Then they came back and they said, "Okay, let's talk about how you've calculated the dues." Uh, yet. A whole host of brokerages and research houses have come out and said, okay, this could be a big boost. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the, the founders of the companies have more interesting companies and you can't just go around saying things like, oh, this company is dead. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not fair also, I suppose, because nothing is dead until it's actually dead. And, you know, sometimes companies trade for three years after they're dead, like in Jet Airways case. So there's no way you can actually say that, you know, uh, something isn't worth it or whatever. But uh, in, a, in my case, I'm, I'm actually concerned because I'm on the buy side. I don't want to buy this stock. I, I, I'll buy their competitors. I own their competitors. So I'm biased in that sense. But the burden is so huge. It's 100,000 crores. Um, to make this company have one rupee of equity, you have to infuse like 100,000 crores into it, which almost is like, you know, why wouldn't I just start a new company in this, in, in, in this space directly? If I had to just infuse, uh, I mean, if, if I had to just put in so much money just to get the company back to having a single, you know, uh, rupee in, in, in positive equity. Uh, but the bigger issue now is the cash flow that comes. Where are they going to get it from? It's going to be 29,000 crores in FY uh, 526. And then for every year after that, for four or five more years, they're going to pay 43,000 crores to the government. Now, you can't convert that meaningfully. I'll give you an example of what this means. 70,000 crores is the current market cap. If they were to con convert 29,000 crores to equity, the government would own, uh, own about, I don't know, 40 or 50, 40%, 40 uh, uh, nearly 40% of the company uh, as, uh, uh, you know, I, they would dilute, they, they would give another uh, 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 greater ownership and then the, the government already owns some 30% or something or 25%. They will end up owning, you know, 35, 40%. And then the subsequent year, they have to convert another 40,000 crores. So I don't think this is feasible in the long term. This will, you know, end up uh, 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 with the government owning a bunch of shares, which has almost little or no value. Uh, maybe the best thing for the government to recover its money is to sell whatever shares it has today. Uh, at least it will get 10 rupees per share. Uh, so that, therein lies the hitch. Uh, there, this, this constant refrain, and this is at the end of it, right? I mean, we have learnt our lessons from Air India, and the government sort of pulled it along. We're sort of seeing that with SpiceJet as well. We had a statement today from the aviation minister saying that we can't let another airline go down. 
And that is the concern with Vodafone. I mean, investors today who are looking at Vodafone going up to 15 rupees, all the notes that are looking at it at the end of the day are banking that the government doesn't want to do a pulley. You will have to have a third player. Well, I don't know if not wanting a third player means let an extremely, I mean, this is the Japan and Korea style of functioning, right? It's like, oh, you're you're bad, but because I don't want a monopoly or because of whatever other reason, I will let you survive. Uh, so even if you're a company that can barely run on its own legs, I will get some public sector bank to give you a loan and somehow you will survive. Uh, why are we doing all this? It's like, you know, ca capitalism means companies die all the time. And it's when companies die that new companies are born. So if this company were to go bankrupt, somebody would be able to buy its assets at a very low price. That low price will be enough for uh, someone to set up the next version of this company uh, at a much lower initial cost, right? So if you don't have this 100,000 crore baggage to begin with, then maybe you can run this company with 10,000 or 15,000 crores of, of fresh equity. Yes, the government loses the money, but this company was going to go to go to zero anyway. Shareholders lose money, but shareholders have taken the risk. That's what they're going to they're going to be in there for. So let the shareholders go to zero. Let the government maybe recover five or ten thousand crores or whatever the little uh, new loans that the banks have given can be adjusted. And maybe this company. Uh, can be revived with a 25 or 30,000 crore package from another private company. Why do we want to protect it? It can still go through bankruptcy and come out with a new owner in a, in a better resolution. I don't uh, I don't see why we can't do that. We can still have three players, but we can have three healthy players rather than two healthy players and one not at all healthy player. So, Deepak, uh, good afternoon, Neeraj here. Uh, been a while, but it, they raised some equity capital at about 12, 13 odd, uh, or 11 and a half odd rupees, right? right? Uh, that institutional money came in thinking about a resolution plan which could make the company healthy because otherwise, why would people put in equity capital, GQG, for example? Now, are you saying, therefore, that this, this decision that has been not gone in the company's favor, um, if, if this hadn't played out this way, then do you reckon the company might have been a healthy third player? And is this the only reason? Or would you have believed that even otherwise the company was going down? Yeah, so I think uh, there was a question of GQG investing about $400 million. $400 million is uh, about 3,500 crores. That is chicken feed in comparison with the 100,000 crores they actually need. So I don't think this is a meaningful amount of extra money that they would have got. Of course, if the government's dues were brought down to, I don't know, 10, 15, 20,000 crores or whatever the company actually wanted, then you would have had this situation where this money that they've raised from the public, which is 18,000 crores, the promoters, which is 2,000 crores, plus these other people, maybe five or 10,000 crores more, that would have been enough to kind of keep the company afloat and running. In the absence of it, the government needs to get paid. That means next, next year uh, in FY25, 26, they need to pay, I think October of next year, uh, roughly a year from now. They're going to have to pay 29,000 crores to the government. Now, where are they going to get that money from? Uh, if they go to raise it from equity capital, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm raising equity capital from you so that I can pay the government. It's all gone. I can't use it. So at some point, uh, this starts becoming more difficult to imagine um, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, any other thing than a, a, a planned bankruptcy, if you may. But I mean, it, it, a lot of things can happen. The promoter can infuse more capital. I don't know whether they want to. They've always said they won't, but recently they put in that 2,000 crores. Vodafone has written this off in its books completely. They are, in their books, they don't, they mention India as we've written it down to zero. So they are not intending to put in more money and they don't think there's a hope for revival for their stake in the company. So uh, unless they come back and say, we'll put in some money. I, I mean, so many of these, if conditions have to work for, for this company to survive as it is, isn't it better that they go through a planned bankruptcy and uh, emerge with a, with a resolution plan that involves maybe a changed owner and therefore uh, a chance to live? You will still have the three players you need. Uh, so, in a way, Deepak, what you're saying is let's put it out of its misery because it's just going to get worse and worse on the other part of it becoming effectively a PSU. Does that make sense from an Indian perspective? I mean, I was looking mm. at the tri data today. BSNL has gained massively. BSNL has had a good month, relatively, more than all of the private players. Uh, does it make sense for an exchequer, for the government, for taxpayers, for the government to go out and bail out Vodafone? It's essentially turning out into a situation where they have to bail out Vodafone, isn't it? 
I mean, given that there is a solution that involves bankruptcy and uh, a resolution plan through a bankruptcy, you can make it faster. We need to make our bankruptcies much faster. People drag them along, put them to court cases, take five or six years. In five or six years, Vodafone idea will not have any subscribers left if it were to do. You have to do a really quick, well-managed bankruptcy process. If you could do that, why would you try to bail it out with taxpayer funds? It's just... It's a terrible way to use our money. We have better ways to do that. Uh, because what you're going to do by bailing it out is just pay yourself. So in the sense of the government gave it, uh, bought equity into Vodafone, all it would do is own more of a company which owes it money. Effectively, it converts its its uh, dues to equity. And then that becomes a little you know unfair. We can't manage a BSNL and make it profitable meaningfully. How are we going to make a, a BSNL plus an idea profitable uh, and then it continues to own for oh, 40,000 crores a year to the government every year for the next four years or something. I think that, you know, that's something that it's not tenable. We should at some point, um, the government will have to write down its debt. That's because the company can simply cannot pay. But the new owner can come in with without having all those uh, past dues to worry about. And then uh, you get a stronger player in the business. And, you know, make sure that the current two players can't bid for it. So that they, uh, so that you still maintain a three three person uh, play. The bailout word does not really fit here. It is not so systemically important that uh, you know the world will come crashing down if this company doesn't didn't exist. So I mm. I don't think there's a need for a bailout. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be a bailout. If you want three players, let there be three healthy players. And what really is the way out? Plan bankruptcy is what Deepak Shinoy is talking about. Thank you so much, Deepak. Always a pleasure to have you on the show and uh, hope to have you back soon.